belonged to the fire department, but he had what was called the rinky dink, which was a little hole in the wall across the street. Uh, he and his wife uh, made hamburgers, served lunch, and he was a fireman. And it was a uh, prominent hangout for young people. Did the firefighters hang out there as well? Who? Did the firefighters hang out there at the Rinky Dink no. as well? No. No. Because it was called, his restaurant was called the Rinky Dink. Did you both hang out at the Rinky Dink? In the mornings at five or so. Yeah, they'd start early and, and uh, my business was right across the street next to the fire department at that time. So uh, <clears throat> I'd go in early, five o'clock or so, have coffee. His father was Ivan Kelsey, and he was a painter. Was he a house painter or a yeah, house, house painter. Yeah, house painter. There were a number of people in Carmel in the early days who built homes here and multiple homes and, and, and did carpentry and that kind of thing. Did, did your families? My grandfather was a carpenter, f worked for M.J. Murphy at first, then we, he went on his own and built a number of houses up at 2nd and San Carlos area. Did you know M.J. Murphy? Did you meet M.J. Murphy? No. no. M.J. Murphy. Yeah. He was quite a businessman at the, at the Lagoon in Carmel presently. Mm -hmm. When we were kids, there was a sand plant there. And the, the trucks would pull in and they'd drop the sand in and they go out. He he sold hundreds of truckloads of sand. Now it's all gone. His lumber yard was uh, where Carmel Plaza is now. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm Jay Murphy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he owned the entire block. It was all lumber, and building supplies. We spoke earlier about um, the fire department, your father, the, and theaters around town and the arts. Um, in the local history department, we have a film of the burning, the first burning of the Golden yeah, Bough Theater. I remember that. Do you remember that? Will you both yeah. know, will you tell me about it? Uh, I was a kid then, of course, and for some reason, maybe it was a, they blew the siren at the firehouse every time of anything major. And I lived in that uh, third in San Carlos, and you could see the plume of smoke. So we ran downtown, I think the Horner kids and myself. It was a big event, <laughs> and it was a big fire. Monteverde and came out of here. How long did it take to get that fire out? Oh, I don't remember. But the building, part of the building still stands. Mm -hmm. you know, Golden Bow. But it was the only theater we had then, and then they, after it burned, they moved down to where they are now. What a ninth and Lincoln. Can't remember. So you both have it sounds like spent time in Carmel Valley. What did besides you know work there? If you had to go out for delivering milk and things, what other types of things did you do out in Carmel Valley? Steel pears. <laughs> <laughs> Get in the orchard and steal fruit. 
Uh, hmm. What was the question about? Carmel Valley. Yeah. Any time you spent out there, what did you do while you were out in Carmel Valley? We've talked about you know the good fishing in Carmel River and now pear stealing. Well, I <laughs> spent a lot of time there and walking in the woods and and. Uh, The sawmill was about what, three miles? Yeah. Sawmill Gulch. Yeah. On the left hand side going out the valley, about three or four miles. I spent lots of time after school going with Richard cutting cutting wood of trees for for lumber. None of it exists today, it's all gone. Mm -hmm. And up in Saw Sawmill Gulch, we had a gun club with a rifle and pistol and shotgun range until our club bought property up in Robinson Canyon and built our own facility. We have a nice operation up there now, private club. We have some photographs of the gun club in its early days in the local history department. Before it moved up the valley or probably I in Sawmill. Yes, before it moved up the valley. So we didn't Sawmill Gulch mm -hmm. at the Did you, either of you do so you've done hunting? You mentioned you were hunting with your father. Yes. Did you ever do any hunting in in Carmel Valley, or I know boars are really big around yeah, here. Yeah, wild pig. Wild pig. Yeah, up around Shrews Ridge. Uh, I have a couple of mounts of big pigs I killed. Any uh, big pigs? Any other? So deer and pigs. Any other types of no, animals? Deer. I bagged a mountain lion one time. Got a hundred and ten dollars bounty fee. There's no body on them now that's protected. No. I wouldn't kill one now anyway. <clears throat> that must have been a, an interesting hunting trip to kill a mountain lion. Yeah. Yeah. I spent a month in Alaska hunting uh, moose, caribou, sheep. But that has nothing to do with this. Um, Vince, or, um, uh, Don, will you tell me about your time in the service? Where were you stationed? Did what? Where were you stationed when you were in the service? Oh. Well, bro, <coughs> in boot camp in San Diego, and then it was, they shipped us to Chicago, and uh, I was with a training friend of the lake there in Chicago, the Navy Pier, and uh, shipped out of there and back to San Diego and then overseas to Roy and Namur and Inuitok and those islands. And that's where, at, at, during that time, my, my father passed away at home, so they through some uh, official officer, they got me sent home for that period of time anyway. And, and back, when I went back to, to San Diego and from there to Miramar and retire or, or shipped out from there, end of service. And um, when was it that you um, returned to Carmel after that? 
And, and when, once, you, once you came back to Carmel, or once you were back on the peninsula, when, when were you married, and when did you start your family? <clears throat> anyway, in forty six, and and later lost my brother. He was a in construction work in Los Angeles. So then it was just you and your mother then? Hmm? It was just you and your mother then, correct? Hmm. After your father died and after you lost your brother, it was you and your mother? Here? Mm -hmm. And you worked for um, you were the, that's when you started construction. construction. When I come back, I went to work for Wilder and Jones in Carmel. And did you guys, when you both landed back here, did you reconnect automatically? Did you, Damn. did you both, when you both moved back to Carmel, did you, were you happy to see each other? Did you oh, pick no, up where well, you left we off? For, for, Long-time friends long -time from friends. school. Did you, when you had young families, do things together? Um, camping trips and things like that when your kids were young? Yeah, we used to, every summer we set up camp down at Big Sur and uh, move our families down there. You could stay there a couple of weeks at a yeah. time and we'd commute back and forth. And, uh, Every, leave there real early in the morning, come in to work, and then go down after work at night. That was a uh, big event for our families. That was a major event for the families, and then the 60s took over and destroyed the Big Sur from there on until they put in some strength down there got it worked out. What were the 60s like here in Carmel? <clears throat> I don't know, busy working. Busy <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Jones was very busy then in construction. And I was hauling a lot of freight. But then I outgrew Carmon and everything started being delivered directly by trucking outfits, no longer by rail. Um. Did either of you, it sounds like you're both pretty busy working, did either of you participate in politics? I thought I overheard one of you saying this is the first time you'd been here in City Hall. Did you? No, nothing in politics. Nothing me, in politics. me either. I was a volunteer fireman for a while. Tell me about that. Well, uh, it was a good group. Uh, I lived in a house behind the high school, I recall. I had an alarm in my closet in the bedroom. So one night the alarm rang and I went out, jumped in my wife's car, threw the garage door open. In the meantime, the garage door came back down. <laughs> I backed up and <laughs> tore the, the devil out of the, the uh, door, of course. Did a lot of damage. So I decided then that I was no longer had the ability to be a fireman, being I lived so f too far out. So when you uh, were down in Big Sur, did you, with your families, do any other activities like backpacking or hiking, things like that? And then 
You know, the kids were little, mostly they hung around the swimming pool. As young men, did you do any backpacking in the Los Padres National Forest? I didn't or? then, but I did a lot of backpacking with Fremont Ballou, we talked about yeah. it. <laughs> and uh, Fremont. Boy Scouts. Favorite trip was to drive up to Choose Ridge, hike through and come out Big Sur. We're into the Big Pines and the Cummings Cabin. When we made that trip, it must have been. Yeah. When you were 10 or 12? Oh, I don't know, probably 14, 15 years old. Ken, Ken Jones. My one remembrance, and you never let, let me forget it, I didn't have a sleeping bag. My folks couldn't afford to buy me a sleeping bag, so I just had you know, an army blanket. It got pretty cold at night. I ended up climbing in, in Kenny bag. Jones' sleeping bag with him. <laughs> yeah, what a beautiful spot, though, in yes. the big pines. Yeah. Big pines and little pines. And apples. Mm -hmm. uh, the cabin was built by a one-armed German from the below Big Sur years before. And uh, they had golden delicious apples. And we carried them. Richard had, they killed a sea lion and they made backpacks, carried 90 pounds of apples. They lasted for a long time. Trees are probably still there. Vince, earlier you mentioned bicycling. Did you bicycle anywhere? I know we I've interviewed an, another person and she talked about bicycling over the hill to Monterey. Were the, was there anywhere else that you took your bike and rode? Did you ever ride down the coast or ride down the Well, valley? later years I got quite active bicycling with two fellows named Sam Hopkins and George Fraley. And we had a local bicycle club bike, so to speak. And we'd ride regularly. One of our favorite trips was Make the Loop, it was called. We'd start in Monterey, go over down the River, river Road, Rio Seco, come back up over Rio Seco into the village. And it was about 80, 90 miles. It was nothing in him. We had a good bike, lightweight bike. But they don't do that anymore, as I know of. All gotten too old. So part of the lore of Carmel is the um, the cookouts on the beach and the abalone song started by George Sterling. Did you, did either of you or both of you together ever do any type of cookout on the beach and? Down the mouth of the river, yeah, but not the down the beach. Not on the beach, no. But at the mouth of the river. It, yeah, at nighttime. You could go swimming in the lagoon. It was possible, but of course, Carmel Beach was too dangerous, too cold to swim. Did you have abalone or cook the trout you huh. caught? What, what kinds of things were you, what was your cookout like? There were abalone and there were the, the uh, mussels, yeah, nice mussels. mussels six, seven, eight inch, wow. and right on to Carmel Point until they found that raft of otters. And thereafter, they're gone. There are no more. So they made a big difference. What was Carmel Point like when the both of you were growing up? was <clears throat> sparsely built. There 
or near as many homes down there, of course, like there are now. What about Carmel Point? What was it like when you both were growing up? Well, we're very few. Not numerous homes like there are now, of course. But the, the road uh, is still the same. And the tour house is still there. Tour house is still there. Did either of you know the Jeffers family? The who? The Jeffers family that lived at tour house, Robinson Jeffers. And yeah, Robinson, so the boys, we used to see the boys walk on the beach in Carmel. I'm in family down there with the Van Rypers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there used to be a golf course out at Carmel Point. Is that right? Not to my knowledge. Might have been before, in the early, early days. Probably. Yeah. So, did I... Did either, were either of you horsemen? Did you ride? I know there were a few stables in town. Yeah, there were two stables, uh, Betty Green's and Hodges. And uh, Betty Green, we used to take the horses down to the canyon down here, to, I guess to feed water, so we'd get a free ride. Okay. Bareback, of course. But, uh, we couldn't, it was too expensive to, to pay to ride a horse. So as kids, well, we trade our, our care, I guess, and for a free ride. Betty Green had the stables right at uh, Unipro and Fifths. Across from her stables was the Carmel Laundry. Now the motels. And the Carmel Laundry is where your father. No, he worked at the agency for Del Monte Laundry. And he was his own employer. I think he worked on a commission basis. Anyway, he had a pretty good business except he was very poor at collections. My mother was always on his neck because he, he was too easy going. He ran out some huge laundry bills. Did he deliver all over the peninsula or was that just here? No, on this side of, just over the hill, this side of the Carmel Hill. Carmel and Hatton Fields and Carmel Highlands. Um, so we've had a number of interviews where pe people have been very diverse in their hobbies and activities. You've talked about horseback riding now and bicycling and all the different kinds of things you can do here in Carmel for fun, but also work. Um, what about just cruising around town? I know you didn't have an automobile for quite a while, did you? just? drive around or um, I know we had one person who actually got their pilot's license. Anything anything like that that either one of you have done? Yeah, I always wanted to fly and I uh, finally about the late 50s, I guess. No, 1955. I went to Del Monte Aviation and uh, obtain a fire um, pilot's license. And I went into a partnership with a couple of guys at a Cessna 182, which I ended up owning myself. So I did a lot of flying then. I was involved in a motel that we built down in Needles, California. It was a good investment. And I was flying down there once a week but I enjoyed flying.
Did either of you ever do any sailing or boating? Did you ever do any fishing out on the bay or anything like that? Or did you stick to Carmel River? For well, when Captain, uh, Captain Johnson had the boat works, you know, Sam Pebble Beach. Cap, uh, Cap, Cap Johnson? Cap Johnson. He, they made him in charge of the, the boats out there in, in the bay. Yeah. In the, I don't PG, or rather Pebble Beach, and uh, I went as, as a kid, I went as crew for people who were racing bird boats and bear boats around the course, around Pebble Beach, Pebble Beach and Point Lobos and around, that's all. about Pebble Beach. Was that a place where you guys would would go to or hang out or <clears throat> not too often because the swimming was, was too dangerous or too cold. The water was too cold mainly. Uh, you both uh, did a lot of swimming then, it sounds like. You both did a lot of swimming then. <coughs> Not on the beach, mainly the mouth of the river, in the lagoon. Because the water wasn't severe, like the ocean, it was safer. have known each other for a very long time now mm -hmm. and you probably know all kinds of things about each other <laughs> and have all kinds of history and stories do you guys have those are the questions those are the questions yes please share all of those things we'd love to hear them no we were perfect gentlemen weren't perfect we? gentlemen, i'm sure well behaved and um, never got into any trouble had any adventures did you two have um, nicknames for each other Mm -hmm. No. Did what, huh? Nicknames for each other. Did you guys have a special name you called each other rather than just by your given names? Oh. Uh, I can think of one, but I won't mention it. <laughs> yeah. It's probably a good one in that case. Yeah, it's from the Rinky Dink. They had all kinds of names. What were the Rinky Dink names? <laughs> you wouldn't want to know those names. <laughs> Kelsey and his crew put together. His name was Slab Dab, nickname. Slab Dab, right. His dad was a painter. And Jimmy, I guess, worked in the trade a little bit. So, um, you guys both laughed when I just mentioned you've been friends for a long time and probably know lots of things and have had lots of adventures. Does yes. anything come to your mind, something particularly fun or a little scary or any kind of adventures you would have had during your childhood? You had a lot more freedom growing up, I feel like, than kids do today. A lot? More freedom then. to roam than kids do today. A lot more time outdoors. Yes. We didn't have television at home. So you didn't spend much time around the boob tube. No. no. kept yourselves entertained. Yeah, I spent a lot of time with my dad and my granddad hunting. You haven't talked a lot about your granddad. Tell me about your granddad. My what? Your granddad. Tell me about your granddad. He was a carpenter. Uh, I think at one time he worked for M.J. Murphy. But 
He did a lot of building in Carmel. I think he also worked with Comstock, but my memory is very vague there. He was small and wiry and had a very strong vocabulary. <laughs> he walked, didn't he? He walked from, from our way to... Oh yeah, well, this was during the Depression. They had this place up in Modoc County out of Fall River. And they, he and my grandmother had a couple jackasses and they hiked then during the Depression from the Bay Area up to Modoc County, camps along the way. It's quite a trip. Yes, yes it was. He gave me my first rifle, I remember. It was 25-20 lever action carbine. But I lost that in the fire along with all my other stuff. What fire was that? My house burned down. I built a new house up the valley. Beautiful home up on the hill on five acres. And I was down the coast pigeon shooting. I came home. No, oh, I was sitting in the rinky dink. Just a little place across some files. Policeman come by and holler and say, hey, Taurus, your house is on fire. So I jumped in the car and start and drove out the valley. I could see a big plume of smoke. But my poor wife, who is deceased now, deceased, she had cleaned out the fireplace. Was, we'd only been in it three or four months. But they thought the ashes were dead, put them in a carton, which happens quite often put the carton out in the garage and put it on a little piece of furniture out there. And, then, and she was sitting around a swing pool that we had with some friends. And she heard this crackling and she went in, opened up the garage and of course everything was flames then. Uh, as I said, I wasn't there. I was down the coast pigeon shooting. So, We don't want to live there for months. A beautiful home. But an important loss. Sure. So it does sound like you spent quite a bit of time at the Rinky Dink. Yeah. The Going there quite often for coffee, mid morning. You know that was the building was originally before it was Rinky Dink. What? It was, what, what was uh, uh, the the girls of the column? Max Max Druin's wife, Pauline Funches. Funches. Funches family. Millie oh. Funches had four girls. Yeah, they lived uh, on the corner of Force and San Carlos. It's a motel now. Millie was a seamstress and had a, a shop down at San Carlos, just north of 6th on the west side. Building's no longer there. He was a, uh, not a photographer, operated the uh, Movie projectors. Moving a projector, projectionist. And he worked at the, at the I call it Philmark, or the Playhouse. It went down on uh, Lincoln. It's Golden Bow now, I guess. Did you go often to the Philmark to see movies growing up? Yes. Okay. Yeah, when you could afford it. How 
How many different theaters were there here in town when you were growing up? Well, at that time, there was only one after the Golden Bow burned. So just at the most, two at the corner of southeast corner of Ocean and Mission was a, they built a brand new theater there. Mm -hmm. But of course that's some kind of shops now. There are a number of building, I mean, obviously buildings that are here in town that were occupied in the past by restaurants. For instance, I've heard a lot about the Bluebird Cafe um, Bluebird, you know, my mother, you know, my mother worked there when she first came to this country as a waitress. Um, where and Carmel's traditionally been a, a place that seems like everything closes down relatively early in the evenings. Were there any places in town that were kind of wild? Any Mission Ranch? Mission Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> what that was that like? Well. It's kind of wild. Uh, well, Skip, Skip, huh? Skip Hebner. Skip Hebner. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was. He was the bartender. No, the bartender was. Uh, had the stables. Uh, what was his name? Hodges. No. Not not Hodges. No. I'll think of it after a while. He had the stables at the corner of Unipro and Ocean, where the motel is now. Lynn, Lynn Hodges? I don't remember. Did they, I know Carmel has always been pretty strict about live music. About place, what? Live music, allowing live music oh. in places where there was drinking. Was that, was that the same for Mission Ranch? No, the Mission Ranch was outside the city limits. Carmel had nothing, nothing to say about it. But uh, that was the only place this side of Monterey that was pretty wild, I think. There was nothing out the valley. They're dancing? Dancing? Say it again. Dancing at the Mission Ranch. Dancing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The uh, gymnasium was a dance floor. In fact, our Lions Club met down there for a while at this. I remember they had a retirement party for my dad. Chief had a big bash at the, the barn, they used to call it, I guess. <coughs> I think the Hebner family owned that operation then. Yeah. Of course, it's owned by <coughs> Clint Eastwood now, I think. One thing to mention about the Mission Ranch, uh, at the time that Carmel High School was built, there was no gymnasium. No. So we used the gymnasium in the Mission Ranch. And that's where the, where the basketball. basketball games were uh, at that time. <laughs> the Sunset School Gymnasium used to have a lot of performances and things like that going on. It was a pretty well-used space. It was a pretty small area, but it joined the cafeteria space, but the gym itself was very, very small. <clears throat> I'm probably one of the oldest people who have gone so many years to Sunset School. I went there as a, as a, in the kindergarten, and then one through eight, and then ninth grade. So I had nine or ten years at Sunset School. And 
and there was a basketball court or a yeah. grass area outside. Did you play? Play basketball. There? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you played as well outside of the Sunset School. There was, and I've heard there were pickup games of baseball outside of the Sunset School. Well, because the park cars on them now. Right. That Vince, earlier you mentioned um, going skiing in Colorado and Aspen. Was that something you did frequently? Did you ski as well, Don? Um, I know that Yosemite was a popular spot for that. Yeah. I don't think Don ever skied. You never skied? No. no. I didn't. Uh, Yosemite, we had the winter camp in the Boy Scout. And, uh, we used to go up there and we'd sleep on the floor at, camp, at the gymnasium at Camp Curry. And that's where I first got the bug skiing. And I spent my honeymoon up there skiing. Badger Pass wasn't much of a hill, but it was better than nothing. When were you married? My first marriage was a, my wife passed away, it was 1947, I think. We were married a little over 30 years and she, we were coming back from a skiing trip at Bend, up Bend, Oregon, and she had a heart attack, sitting down for breakfast on the train. And my second wife was with us, and after three or four years away, we got married. And then she passed away here just a month ago. So, two marriages a little over 30 years each. Quite a while to be married. How many children did you have? Three. And they all grew up here in Carmel? Yeah, one of them sitting over there. Water movie sitting over there. And uh, one of them has passed away. Who are they, Denise? Like? Catherine and Andrea. Oh, yeah, Catherine and Andrea. They live in Seattle. One of them retired out of the school system, and the other one's a teacher. What about you, Don? How many children did you have? Three. Three? Yeah, Ron. There's one, two of them. We're gone already. Ron and Debbie. And if you know Barbara, Ann. so. When your children were young, did you enjoy showing them the Carmel that you grew up with and teaching them fishing and? hiking and backpacking and those types of activities? <clears throat> well, the major, the major trips that, that uh, Barbara Ann has made, uh, or Ron partially, were the trips that, on the river. Spent a lot, a lot of time at the lagoon or the mouth of Carmel River because the ocean was too rough for, for kids. We'd go down there swimming, <coughs> or up Carmel Valley. It was a spot, a spot that uh, we could picnic and swim on the river. And did they have the same type of freedom that you both had when they were to roam around? Probably there was television when they were a little younger, but. Mm. I think it was a good area for kids to grow up in. We didn't have any particular crime that I knew of. Yeah, I would have to say that during our time in school and growing up in Carmel, they could absolutely couldn't be beat for. Yeah, it was a good town to grow up in. Enjoy good 
family relations and good football, baseball, and so on. And work-wise, and we wanted to. It sounds like you, Carmel was a very close, I mean, it's a small area. But yes. It sounds like it was very close-knit. Yes. As far as the, the people go. You yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you know most of, all, most of the kids that were, you were growing up with, you know where they lived, you know what their folks did. And it was small schools. Carmel High School, one of those days had only, what, 250 kids, all mm -hmm. told, maybe. My class at Sunset School was probably 40 kids. Did you, uh, did you guys have favorite subjects when you were in school? What, favorite what? Favorite subjects? Did you prefer subjects? math or science or? No. History, maybe. Were you in any clubs? We've talked about sports, but any clubs, debate club or? Um, no, just our, no, just our Boy Scouts. Just Boy Scouts. We're both in Troop 39. <laughs> How long were you both Boy Scouts for? Until you grew out of it. <laughs> oh, probably. Or five years till we discovered girls. <laughs> Did you both have, go to a lot of parties and have a lot of no. girlfriends growing up? No. Fishing, hunting, walking, running on the beach. That used up my time. My great part. <clears throat> we both came from working families, so we had to work as a kid. I remember my mother saying it with a Scotch brogue. There's no time for football, laddie, when there's work to be done. So I didn't go out football, I had to work. In the evenings after you finished your, your work for the night. Do what? After you finished your work in the evenings, did you what, what did you, what would you do with your time then? Would you hang out with friends? Would you just be at home with your families? Uh, I have to think about it. Especially when you were teenagers, were you home with them? Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. We didn't come home or stay at home, we'd go hungry. And we got up early in the morning, I recall, because I my job at the Carmel Dairy, a milk route for school in the morning. And the Carmel Dairy later became the Mediterranean market, right? Yes, yes, it not now it's some kind of gift shop now. For a short period of time, it was a Chinese restaurant. Then it became Mediterranean Market, I think. Anyway, I know it was a Chinese restaurant for a short period. Did you used to go there, to that restaurant? No, not necessarily. Part of my job when I was working for real, I had a, well, I had the milk out in the morning, and then they had a bottling machine, great big machine. Because in those days the milk was in glass bottles. So I'd run the bottling machine, wash the bottles. A funny story. 
We had a driveway with it back down into the dairy on off of Sixth Street. And I was working there as a kid and somebody told me to Rosie Henry had Rosie's Cracker Barrel in Carmel Valley had a brand new pickup. It was a uh, four or five speed box. Anyway, somebody told me, hey kid, go move that truck out of the way. So I got into it on the slope. I put it in the wrong gear. <laughs> Back I went, knocked over a whole sled of cream. Old Earl Graff was the <laughs> owner. I thought I was going to get canned right on the spot. <laughs> you remember Rosie yeah. Henry? <laughs> so when the Earl had succumbed to that one, what? I said Earl probably was excited about that one. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't make any points that day. You mentioned that your mother was a cook for the Carmel Dairy, so there was a restaurant as well. Oh yeah, and the front end of it was the Mediterranean Market, but the back was the bottling area, and then upstairs was Earl's offices. And you're back in off of 6th Street, down a driveway to, you could park one pickup at a time. There were quite a few, uh, the Wormuth family was a pretty big family here in town. The what? The Wormuth family, they were a pretty big family yeah, in uh, town. Yeah, there's still some of them yeah. still around. Delbert lives down where Don, Mission Fields, he was in the Marine Corps. And some of the girls uh, in my company that I took over and I still own, well, I'm the landlord now, was the Wormuth Storage Company or Wormuth family. And that's the office on Del Monte now. And is that, that's where the Del Monte Express used to come in? The Del Monte Express is my property it's down on the corner. And then there's a big building behind it that I built many years ago, a warehouse. And, uh, and I built some other buildings in that general area. But I still have an office there. I'm not very active. Well, I don't have to be. But I'm some place to go early in the morning, excuse to get out of the house, have a cup of coffee. How would you how would you describe your perfect Carmel? I think you guys have both kind of done a little bit of that. Your Carmel, what is, if you were going to say my Carmel is, how would you describe your Carmel? A lovely place to grow up in as a kid. I can't use the strong language I'd like to use, but now it's a damn tourist trap. It's no longer a friendly little village or town. Yeah. I guess it might be if you're young. What about you, Don? Well, <clears throat> I feel the same way about it. Uh, uh, it would be just disgusting to, to think it would be any different than what we enjoyed. It was, it was, it was all there to enjoy. You could get out and hustle. If you had work to do, do it. Are there any other changes you've seen over time besides the tourist part of it that? The nature of the shops, yes. I think at one time there were about five. If you're thinking about changes, uh, major changes in, in uh, topography, uh, which is farming and row crops, for instance, artichokes. Mm -hmm. Everything from Rio Road. Yeah. 
the minute that you would pass Carmel Mission and get on Rio Road, you were in artichokes. And from there, about uh, five miles up the valley, you were still in artichokes. There were a lot of pear orchards in the lower valley. That and pear orchards brought up the, the old timer that used to have the pears, pear trees. Hans's buddy. And six, there were six, six service stations downtown Carmel years ago. Now I don't think we have any, do we? Yeah, one. The area you're talking about where all the artichokes are now, the Odello fields, that area is uh, Mission Fields. Mission Fields, that area is flooded right. in the past. Well, That's where. Well, yeah, where we live. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have any problems with flooding, Don? Do you what? Did you ever have any problems with flooding in the past? I know we had big floods in 95 and 96. 95. Was, um, We had floods in 95 and big water in 96 and 97. And the artichoke fields would have been covered then. Oh yeah, it was wiped out. <clears throat> yeah, I went down. First I moved your furniture out. <laughs> and then Dick Lewitke. Anyway, it was a pretty busy time. I mean, one call at six, six o'clock in the evening, one call was when, when we were standing in the water four feet deep in the inside the house. And it was Vince's wife said, if you, have, if you want to get out of the water, come on up. And we did. We, we stayed up there three days. Then the motel on the river, they made the second floor available for people who, who lost uh, everything from their homes, you know. Because if you would take a look at it, it would look like the, the, the garbage deal from the, from the world was all along the streets washers, dryers, everything that you could think about moving was out on the street and being picked up. I don't think I, we're doing that flood, but <clears throat> you know where Bixby Creek is? It used to be a restaurant before you cross the bridge going south on the right hand side. I got called out by the Sheriff's office, I think. And I went down with a truck in the middle of the night, loaded all their booze, brought it into my warehouse in Carmel. <laughs> I had the top floor the, next to the fire department, uh, was a warehouse. Below that was Sprouse Rights Company. And, uh, so I had all their booze stored in my warehouse for a short period. <laughs> And that was where the, uh, the killing was the, the uh, Philippines. You ever hear about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were four or five employees. Nine. Nine? Mm -hmm. Anyway, when I went berserk. And they killed what, was it four or five of them? Something like that. It's way back in the, it's been in the 40s. What business was that? What business was that that they worked for? Filipino cooks. They got a, they were playing cards, I think, story one. Two card games. They got an argument. Probably had too much to drink. And anyway, they had a, a massacre. It public information probably you could get the, uh, the Herald. Uh,
were there any other, I don't want to say massacres, but scandal types of things in town that you remember happening, or was it pretty much? No, it was a pretty calm, calm town to grow up in, pretty peaceful. Were there ever any, we talked about the flooding, were there any other floods or huge storms when you guys were growing up? No, the other major loss was the Golden Bow Theater when that burned down. Mm-hmm. And that burned twice, didn't it? Once in the 1930s and then later? I don't know, I'm not sure. Vince, um, you are a member of the Sierra Club. Will you yeah. tell me about hiking with the Sierra Club? Yes. We had a lot of local hikes and also in the Sierras. But people I did that with now are gone. But you had good times hiking oh, with yeah, friends. Oh yeah, great outings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm 92 now, so I'm beyond that hiking. When you, when you, um, I guess I want to ask each of you the same question once and see what kind of answer I get. Um, When you think of Don as your friend, is there a particular memory that comes to mind? Some, something you did together, something that makes you smile, something that happened to you when you were kids or adults or? Our friendship with Fremont Ballou. Yeah. He was a fine old gentleman. Uh, was her family name in PG that, that told you about Fremont? I cannot remember her name, but I'll find out and I'll, I'll tell you what her name was. But she had very similar memories to the both of you, very good memories, and was pleased to find out more information about him because it was just a memory. She didn't even remember his name, hmm. just the description of him. He was a World War I veteran. He had all his old army stuff up in his house, helmet, gas mask, stuff like that. Yeah, when, uh, near the end of his life, uh, you couldn't walk through his house. It was all piled, stuff was piled to, to the ceiling. And you just walked through a little trail. He was postmaster for a time, wasn't he? Wasn't uh, postmaster, he might have worked for the Postal Service. Uh, he, he, he did a lot of different jobs for, for the forest group. He's and, quite an outdoorsman. Including what they call the guys that make a survey of the, the area. Surveyor? It's a, well, it was like a surveyor. I can recall one incident, he lived just north of uh, 4th or 3rd on Dolores, down the dip, <laughs> he lived on the other side, <laughs> yeah. that. and he had this old Plymouth or little touring car, and we were going someplace for some reason. He had the choke pulled all the way out. <laughs> 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 You go down in the dip there and headed south, come up and towards. And they wouldn't go up the, yeah. the hill, so he'd ease it back down and start up again. And we had Fitz laughing. We knew what the problem was, I think. <laughs> <laughs> he was a fine old gentleman. And what about you, Don? I asked. 
Vince this question. What do you think about when you think of Dawn? Is that the same? Fremont Ballou, is that the memory that jumps to your mind or some other adventure the two of you have yeah. together? Yeah. Oh, Pop Kelsey, maybe? Or <laughs> Gene Ricketts? I just think about the association that he's had with, let's say, the Rinky Dinks and the rest, the rest of the hunting and fishing and so on. That's make you smile right there. Who is Pop Kelsey? He's with Jim Kelsey's father. He was a painter, lived down on uh, Lincoln on Fifth. He walked the beach every morning oh. and he picked up things, you know, cases of Coca-Cola unused, the people that make a party at night. He had a, he had a list. That's, a, that's something that if you're ever talking to Jim's wife. Francis? Yes, yeah. I think she's passed on. Now that list that Pop Kelsey put together over 50 years of items that he's found on the beach and made a a record of it. Oh yeah, he had the book and he's, he's in a little shop office. Were there a lot of parties on the beach where people left things behind? Oh yeah, all kinds of stuff. He, he'd come in with a list of them, you know, like 20, 20, Our dogs and so on and so forth. Like, you know, people walk off and leave them. Can, of course, drinks and so on, Coca Cola and so on. Anything else that you two want to talk about since you're here with us today? Not that you'd want to hear, I don't think. I think we'd want to hear anything and everything. This is all so interesting. I've been <laughs> really enjoying hearing the both of you talk about Carmel. It's yeah, it was a lovely little town to grow up in. People ask me about Carmel. I say, now it's a damn tourist trap. Still nice, I guess, compared to some places. But you two were lucky to grow up when it was. Thank you, pardon? You both were lucky and you grew up in this. Yeah, oh, yeah. Very special time. Fine. Small town to grow up in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that um, where the park branch of the library is, right across from Devendorf Park, that. That was an interesting spot that used to be. I heard a blackberry patch, and then eventually a grocery store, and there's a spring underneath it. A what? A spring, a natural spring. Hmm. Hmm. Where the lumber yard is now, hmm. or where it used to be? Right. Not to my knowledge. We used to play in there all the time. Did you? As kids, yeah. I remember one time, I guess somebody had been stealing some lumber, and we were there with the Appletons who lived across the street, playing cops and robbers or some damn thing. And somebody called, and all of a sudden, here's two or three policemen <laughs> with the flashlights on us, and probably, well, I don't know if we had any guns drawn or not, but uh, they hollered at us to come out with your hands up. <laughs> hmm. They had a policeman in those days, Norton, old Bob Norton. Yeah. His nickname was Quick Draw Norton. <laughs> uh, and Roy Freitas. 
I was a uh, special policeman in Carmel and then my younger years because I was a pretty good pistol shot and I used to shoot, shoot on uh, Clive Clawman's team. And every Easter week, I would volunteer and they would put me on the desk. I couldn't be out on patrol, but it freed a freeman, a freed a uh, patrolman, because I could answer the phone and handle the office and the desk. That's when the police station was down on Delor on Mission and Seventh. Oh. That's before the place was built up on Unipro mm -hmm. City Works. And I did it just to help out. But they insisted on paying me a dollar an hour or some darn thing. Was Probably. Oh, sir, go ahead. I guess for the liability standpoint. So, so I got a on the city payroll a couple of times. <laughs> Was Easter week a big week? This was, yeah, during Easter week, big week. That's like spring break. When they had a lot of people in town, a lot of activities. So I was the desk man at the police department. What kinds of things would go on? What kinds of calls did you take in route? Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, accidents probably, or somebody with firecrackers maybe, I don't know. Nothing serious. They used to do fireworks on Carmel Beach, didn't they, for Fourth of July? Oh yeah, that was. When we were kids, my two sisters and myself would go down early with my mother. My dad come down later, and they had fireworks out at Pebble Beach because there's a lot of money involved there, and they could afford some pretty exciting fireworks. So we'd go down early, have a barbecue, and be there in time to watch the fireworks at Pebble Beach fireworks display. Did you ever set off any fireworks yourself? Well, we couldn't afford them. Did I ever what? Set off any fireworks yourself? Oh, yeah. Firecrackers? You know, yeah, firecrackers. Whatever you could afford. Nothing fancy like it. Skyrockets and those things. They were too expensive. <laughs> but Pebble Beach, of course, there was a lot of money out there and they had some pretty extreme fireworks. John, did you, did you volunteer? I mean, Vince just spoke about working with the police department and the fire department. Your father was yeah, part of the well, fire department. Yeah, I was department. on the fire department. Were you a uh, special deputy as well, or? No. No? No, I was <clears throat> not had an occasion to uh, get involved, just except the United States Marine Corps. And I was there. And how I got back from there is a difficult. Hmm. Is there anything else? that you guys can think of that you no. remember? I think very lucky to have been raised in town, small town like we were in Carmel. Pretty much stayed out of most trouble. Most trouble? <laughs> Any serious trouble. I read um, a story in the Pine Cone about some of the Halloween shenanigans where some of the older kids would take uh, some of the younger kids out to uh, towards Carmel Valley and uh, 
uh, leave them there to scare them, so they'd have to find their way back home. Oh. This is. No. None of your. None of your. No. Not trouble, trouble. No, I haven't heard of that. And roll pumpkins down Ocean Avenue. Did you participate in the Halloween parade when that got started? Say again. Did you participate in the Halloween parade when that got started? I think that would have been started sometime in the 1930s. When what started? The, the Halloween parade. Oh, a parade. That's a parade with observers later on all of the pieces of broken Halloween pumpkins mm -hmm. all over Ocean Avenue where the kids would roll them down, you know. You guys sound like you had a, a great childhood. Yes, it was a great really? town to grow up in. Like I said before, and now it's a damn tourist trap. All right then. <laughs> Thank you both for coming in today to mm -hmm. talk to me and be here with us. We really appreciate it, and I think other people are going to like hearing about. Good, thank Good you, thank you. Good time growing up here in Carmel, it's really important. Yeah, yeah. Still a nice area compared to some. It's true. Yeah. Well, we didn't have any serious crime of any kind in town. I can remember. We'll just, we'll just go on working hard. What? I say, we'll just go on working hard. Ask them what they call each other. What? What do you guys call each other? Your names for each other? Well, one name I can't mention, but... The gorilla? The gorilla and the executive. DB, I guess. Uh, Gorilla. Dumb bastard. <laughs> <laughs> That's the word he was thinking about. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, we've had some other interviewees be candid with us, so. <laughs> Language wise, this, otherwise. When I used to come in years ago and walk in the house, and his mother would be at the sink, you know. And she used to say, ah, there is my oldest boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had quite an accent. She came, came directly from Glasgow in 1930 to Carmel. No, no, it's earlier than that. 1920. Yeah. So, John, you must have been at uh, Vince's house quite often then to be considered the oldest boy yeah. when you were younger. Yeah, you're always hungry. <laughs> Vince, can I ask, uh, what's your favorite uh, fish story about uh, fishing on uh, Carmel Lagoon? What's the one you always tell? In Carmel or yeah. all over? No, in Carmel. That was oh. the lagoon. You said you went uh, fly fishing for salmon and trout. No, I wasn't a fly fisherman in those days. Uh, salmon eggs, probably. But I can well remember the Ardian boy. Yeah. I think Marty Ardian, he had a younger brother. He had a keen pole or something. And in order to get any distance, he'd have the kid take his line or bait, take it back and put it in the sand, and he could cast. 
Digamos. Kind of medieval fishing in those days. I wasn't a fly fisherman then. Later I became an avid fly fisherman. Been fortunate, fished all over. Into Russia, South America, Alaska a number of times. What was the largest salmon you ever took out of the uh, lagoon? Say again? What was the largest salmon you ever caught in the lagoon? Oh, we never caught any big fish. Yeah. Well, sometimes steelhead, but you had to snag them, which was illegal. So the salmon, 42 pounds. Yeah, so all right off uh, Pebble Beach, I mean off the, uh, the Arch Rock, we used to call it. And that's the record, or one of you two got that? That's a, that, was, that was a record. Of was, Ken Jones got one, 47 pounds that same day. Trolling out of a boat. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so far as salmon is concerned, but rockfish, beautiful. Lots of rockfish. Right off the coast. Do you fish them shore for rockfish? Rockfish off the. Uh, we used to fish small boats, run on that small boat, with, uh, 16 foot. Skiff and fish at the edge of the sh uh, where there would be s what's the weeds in the water? Kelp. Yeah, the edge of it, and drop the lines down and pick up the beautiful rockfish. The limit for a trout in those days is 25 fish. I think the limit now is probably now is 10. Did you ever catch your limit? Have I? Oh, yeah, in those days, sure. Uh, can you still fly fish for trout in the uh, Carmel River? Can you what? Can you still fly fish for trout in the Carmel River? You could, but it wouldn't you have any catch luck. Anything? We could steal that come in now, if, if we get enough water. Uh -huh. But uh, I don't know whether I have a whether steelhead fishing is open or not in the Kaimo River. Mm -hmm. One of the best fishing we could do is this is thirty years, maybe forty, fifty years ago, when you could you could. Get out of the Mount Moss Landing, you could pick up five and six inch clams. Now, if you can't turn one over, it's two inches. They eat them all. And, and the mussels and, and uh, abalone are gone. Fortunately, the rockfish are still pretty good. Thank you both so much. Okay. Okay. Don't forget, we've got your microphones on, so let me help you. Do what? You've got your microphone. Oh, yeah. So.